Your father is in a very bad state, your grandmother said when she came down. I could tell she was barely holding it together. Go walk to your friend's house now, she ordered me. I was terrified and quickly gathered my things. The walk there was excruciating. I had a bad, bad feeling in my stomach. I was shaken and quickly gathered my things. The walk was unbearable. I had a bad feeling in my stomach. When I arrived at my friend's house, I rang the doorbell, but no one answered. No one was home. So I sat down on the stoop, and as I looked up, an ambulance drove past me with my mother's car following right behind it. I sat there alone in complete turmoil. Was my father going to make it? Will I ever see the glee in his eyes when he lifted up his trumpet again? Will I ever hear the beautiful songs he'd play from it? I never told you the full story, did I? Well, your grandparents were both born in 1945. Since your grandmother was 14 years old, she fell in love with an instrument called the oboe. Your grandfather started since he was 11, but his instrument was the trumpet. And boy, he couldn't just play, but he was amazing. He had perfect pitch, the rare ability to identify the name of a note with no previous reference. He was thought to have Asperger's syndrome, which as you know, you are also diagnosed with. They met after college when they went to the BBC Training Orchestra based in Bristol. Bear in mind, this was a long time ago and it no longer exists. Your grandmother said, I heard the best trumpet player I had ever heard, so I turned around and that's when I saw him. They began dating in their early 20s while still in the BBC Training Orchestra. Once they had finished in the training orchestra, your grandmother went on to play first oboe in the London Philharmonic Orchestra, while your grandfather went on to play at the Covent Garden Opera House. They both recorded loads of famous things. Your grandmother was the oboe on Gabriel's oboe from the mission, and your grandfather recorded the 1978 Watership Down and music by John Miles. You're already following in their footsteps by being in the choir on the new Papillon movie. Your grandparents got married, and shortly after, in 1969, they had me. When I was five, I started the piano, and when I was eight, I took up the flute. It was a happy time. Everything started falling apart when I was ten. He had been having terrible migraines, seizures, and his behavior had completely changed. So one day, he went on a train to go to have tests to find out what was wrong. Your grandmother and I met him at the station. When he walked out, he was completely bald. I was so shocked. I thought he was on a business trip. I found out later he was diagnosed with a grade four astrocytoma, a terminal brain tumor. He went through chemo, the usual. I don't know the specifics, but eventually he went in for surgery. I stayed at home with my grandmother, who asked if I wanted to pray. I declined, thinking that was a ridiculous thing to do as I was already 11 or 12 at the time and I was never raised particularly religious. My neighbors gave birth to twins, so my grandmother and I went over to see them while the surgery was taking place. It was hard being around other people when there was such a huge thing going on in our lives, but it ended up helping to keep us distracted from thinking the worst thoughts. Eventually, your grandmother called to say he'd pull through. I wasn't allowed to see him for the six weeks it took for him to recover, but your grandmother saw him every single day. On the day he was going to finally come home, I went to visit him with my mother and grandmother. I was very anxious as I really didn't know what to expect. When I got to the ward, I even saw a man with half of his head caved in, which frightened me even more as I had never seen anything like it before. When I walked into the room where your grandfather was staying, I saw him and I didn't know how to react. He looked very unwell and had a huge scar on his head from the surgery. I wanted to cry, but I knew even then that would make things worse. When they went home, 
he progressively got more unwell. But your grandmother continued playing in the LPO. So, as I said, he was in the bed upstairs and your grandmother came down in a very panicked state saying he was in a very bad state. She ordered me to go to my friend's house and no one was home so there I was sitting on the stoop watching the ambulance fly by me with my mother in the car speeding right behind it. I just kept telling myself over and over again that he was going to be okay. Apparently, once he got to the hospital, they stabilized him, but I was not allowed to see him for days. He had become paralyzed on the left side. I remember when I did visit him, he was in the hospital bed, but he would still help me with my math homework because that part of his brain was still functioning perfectly fine. But every time he would try to play his trumpet, it kept flopping down because he had completely lost the use of his left side. I felt so sorry for him as he kept realizing that he couldn't play the one thing he loved to do the most. But he never stopped trying. He was also becoming less and less like himself. One night when I was 13, I could somehow sense that he was dying. I went up to him and begged him to keep breathing. Suddenly, he lost consciousness and I called for my mother. My mother demanded I leave the room, so I went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, your grandmother came into my room and told me that my father had passed away. Honey, she said to me, your father is gone. I don't know why, but for some reason when I heard that, I threw up in the bin next to my bed. And afterwards, my mother hugged me to console me. But then she left to go get things organized. I sat and listened as people came and collected the body and I could hear them struggling down the stairs with it. That night, I slept in the bed with your grandmother, but I was on the side my dad died on. But something strange happened, as if it were some kind of supernatural experience. I felt like my dad was trying to push me out of his bed. So I decided to go and sleep in my own bed. Because of this trauma that I went through, I became very rebellious and my grades dropped. I failed math because it reminded me of my dad. I also quit the flute, and I didn't take it up again until I was 18. Your grandmother continued at the LPO until retiring at 60 for the birth of her first grandchild. But since the passing of my father, she was never the same. But as you know, three years later, your grandmother met Kenneth Graham, who worked for the LPO in transporting the instruments. You know who you call grandpa now. I used to be very angry and resentful towards him at first. I couldn't believe he tried to come in to replace my father. But as time went on, I grew to love him. You and your grandfather have so, so much in common. It makes me even more sad that you never got to know him. But if you want to follow in his footsteps, then you should know his whole story. Your love of music comes from them both. But your talent, that's from him. Hey guys, we like the story so much that it's inspired us to want to know more about our parents and grandparents, as well as your parents and grandparents. They have had a whole lifetime in order to collect stories that are inspirational, educative, and if shared could help, well, anyone. So why don't you sit down with your parents and grandparents and get their inspiring stories. Anything that has can be funny, can be inspiring, can be touching, can be emotional, can be hard things, difficult things that they have gone through their whole lives or any time in their life. And just share it with us on our stories platform, which is in the same place as always, in the description.